Welcome grade eight to our next video, our final video on different types of transformations called rotations. Now when it comes to rotations, uh, rotations is our third and final way that we're going to talk about how we can move around a shape on a grid. Our first that we had was through reflection. Our second was through transformation and our third or translation and our third is through rotations and rotations is all about taking an object or an image and spinning it or rotating it into a new spot before we talk about rotations we're going to talk about the different types of rotations that we can have usually when we think about rotations we talk about them as either being clockwise or counterclockwise. Sometimes the textbook also uses the term anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise means the same thing as counterclockwise. So clockwise, we can think about it as going around in the direction as a clock would. So if you think about a kind of a clock, all right, we have 12, three, six, and nine. This clock would go around in this direction. Um, and clockwise then goes around in this direction, starting maybe at the top and working its way around to the right. Counterclockwise goes in the opposite direction. So if that goes that way, counterclockwise now would go around this way, around things. So now that we understand the direction that we're going to be spinning in, whether that's clockwise or counterclockwise, Let's now take a look at how much we need to spin it. So in an entire circle, if we were to spin all the way around an entire circle from beginning to end, so let's start here, let's say we're going all the way around and we're ending right where we started, that we call a 360 degree turn. We end off where we began. Um, if we are not going all the way around, let's say we're going halfway around, I'm starting here and I'm going right to here, that's where I'm ending, we would say that is a 180 degree turn. It's half of 360. So sometimes we think of this as a full turn. And if that happened to our shape, we just end off in the exact same place we started. 180 degree turn, that's kind of a half turn. We also have quarter turns that we're going to talk about. So uh, a quarter turn would be starting here and maybe finishing off right here. And we would say that that is a 90 degree turn or a one quarter turn as well. When you get to high school, you're going to learn about all different types of rotations, but these are going to be the three that we are going to be dealing with. We will talk about a fourth one as well, but we're also going to talk about a different way to think about it so that really there's only three. And that's a uh, three quarter turn. So if you were to start here, and if you were to go around, you'd pass halfway, and you kind of end off right here you would have a 270 degree turn, which is going three quarters of the way around a circle. Now, all of these examples that I drew are going clockwise, but there's an interesting thing. If I'm doing a 360 degree full turn clockwise, does it matter if I go around clockwise or counterclockwise? No, they're exactly the same. I'm ending in exactly the same spot because it's all the way around. Same with 180 degrees. If I'm turning halfway around, does it matter if I'm going to the right or to the left? No, it doesn't. Think about if you're standing up. If you're standing up and you do half a turn around so that now you're facing the opposite way, does it matter if you turn to the right or to the left? No, you're still gonna end up in the exact same spot. A 90 degree turn, this is where the direction matters. A 90 degree turn, we want to know, is it clockwise? Am I doing a quarter turn to the right? Or am I doing a quarter turn to the left? 270 degrees is also interesting here 
This is a three quarter turn and it does matter whether we're going to the right or whether we're going to the left. What's interesting here is that a 90 degree turn clockwise is the exact same thing as a 270 degree turn counterclockwise. You may have heard the expression, two lefts don't make a right. Well, three do. If you turned left three times, it's the same as if you were to turn right once. And just like that, if we were to turn right once or one quarter turn, it would be the same as turning left one, two, two, three times, we'd end up in the same spot. Just like a 90 degree turn clockwise is the same as a 270 degree turn counterclockwise, the same is also true if we go, uh, if we kind of reverse these options. So if I were to talk about now a 90 degree turn counterclockwise, that's the exact same as a 270 degree turn, turn uh, clockwise. So they can kind of equal each other. So if you don't like working with 270 degrees, just convert it and use the other one. Now that we've talked about what these are, let's talk about how to actually work with this with a shape. So let's think about a triangle again. I'm gonna draw maybe a fairly simple triangle here. One, two, three points. And we'll say it's point A, point B, and point C. Now, there's a couple of bits of information that we need to know before we do our rotation. One, how much are we rotating? In other words, are we going 360 degrees, 180, 90, 270? How much are we rotating? Second, we need to know what direction are we rotating in? Are we going clockwise or counterclockwise? The third and final piece of information that we're going to need before we do this rotation is going to be, what are we rotating it around? There has to be some sort of point that acts as the rotation point. For most of what we're going to be working with, our main rotation point is going to be right here in the center of our graph, what we call the origin. The origin we say is right at the middle, that's where X and Y are both zero. That is our rotation point that this is going to be spinning around. So let's give some information here. Let's say we're going to spin 90 degrees clockwise about or around the origin. Okay. So I know I'm going 90 degrees. I know I'm going to be doing a quarter turn. I know that I'm going clockwise, so I'm turning it to the right. And I know that it's going to be around that origin point. There's two ways we can solve this question now. Uh, we know that we're spinning it around here. So one of the ways that we can use to solve this particular question actually involves figuring out our angles. And that can sometimes be a tricky thing to do. What's nice is that 90 degrees is uh, an exact equal corner. So to figure this out, you could use the corner of a textbook, the corner of a piece of paper, the corner of anything else that makes a nice right angle triangle. Um, and so we figure out how far is it from each point to the rotation point, spin 90 degrees, and then figure out from there how far it is at the exact equal distance after we did 90 degrees to the right to our new A location. Same with C, figure this out, do a 90 degree rotation, and then we have our new location or a new spot after we did that full 90 degrees from that new location, our C naught. Same with B, figure this out, then do a 90 degree rotation and figure out where that's going to end up for our new B location here. You'll see that it looks like I have a whole shape that I spun 
90 degrees around this point here, the origin point. Well, that's one way we can do it, but if we're spinning around the origin, there's actually an easy way or a cheat way to think about that. If we're taking this part here and we're redrawing it with a quarter spin to the right, well, take your piece of paper, spin it one quarter way to the right, and redraw that shape in that exact new spot using those coordinates, but in this new section or this new quadrant here. If you're doing a 180 degree turn, figure out the distance from A to the origin, and then keep going past it to figure out your new A location. Same with C. From here, we're going to go to our new C location here. From B, go to our origin, and then continue to our new B location right down here. This would represent the triangle when it spun 180 degrees, and that, it does not matter whether we went clockwise or counterclockwise. If you have to do a 270 degree clockwise turn, you could do the same as a 90 degree counterclockwise, but it would end up in this quadrant here, and you'd have your shape in that new location. So hopefully this helps explain how we get a shape or a point from one location to the next, either using uh, our degrees, figuring out how far it is from the point of origin or from the rotation point, and then measuring either a quarter turn, half turn, or three quarter turn to the right clockwise or to the left counterclockwise for our new point locations.